Hello students, this is the lesson video for lesson 2.13 and we're going to be going over complex carbohydrates. So here's a general overview of complex carbohydrates. What we're going to be going over is talking about what complex carbohydrates are made up of. They are made up of simple carbohydrates, which we went over last lessons, and they provide energy and structure for living organisms based on what type of complex carbohydrate we're talking about. So the goals for this lesson is to understand the roles of different complex carbohydrates in living organism, recognize the different types of complex carbohydrates, understand that complex carbohydrates are made up of many simple carbohydrates linked together, understand how complex carbohydrates can be used for energy, and then describe the role of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and water in living things. So those are our goals for this lesson. Okay, so complex carbohydrates are called polysaccharides, and they are made up of many simple carbohydrate molecules linked together. Okay, so if you remember, when we talked about monosaccharides, we said that saccharides meant sugar, right? Um, mono meant one, so that's when we were talking about one sugar or a simple sugar. But now we're talking about polysaccharides, and poly means many. So when we're talking about complex carbohydrates, we're talking about many sugars put together um, by bonding. Okay, so some examples of polysaccharides would be starch, cellulose, and also glycogen. They're all large molecules, and the reason why there are large molecules is because they're made up of hundreds or even thousands of glucose molecules, which remember is a monosaccharide or one sugar held together in different ways. And the two functions of a complex carbohydrate is that it can either store energy or provide strength and support to living things. Another way to say that is it provides structure to living things. So here's an example um, of a complex carbohydrate. Behind um, this picture is um, some mashed potatoes. Right? And if you look at the chemical structure of mashed potatoes, you would see that it is made up of starch molecules. Um, each of these, these um, green molecules um, is basically glucose, and so glucose strung together in a particular way makes up starch. Again, because starch is a complex carbohydrate and glucose is just that simple one. So if you put a lot of the glucose molecules together, you can make a complex carbohydrate such as starch. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what starch is. So plants store glucose as starch. So again, starch is a, is a way that plants can store glucose. Okay, remember glucose is the sugar that is key, the key molecule in delivering chemical energy to cells. And so this is obviously something that would be very important to store. So plants often make more glucose than they immediately need. So they don't want to put it to waste. What they do is they actually store this extra glucose, as we said before, as starch. Okay, so starch is a complex carbohydrate, meaning that it's made up of many glucose molecules, and it's made up of hundreds of units of those glucose molecules, but they're linked in a very specific way. Because starch is made up of glucose, you may think of it as a stored chemical energy inside a plant. Plants store glucose as starch during times when energy is abundant so that when energy isn't as abundant and is more limited, they can break down the starch, and when they break down the starch, they actually release glucose, because remember, starch is made up of many glucose molecules. And when they release this glucose molecule, um, then it's available for the process of cellular respiration, which is where we make that usable energy called ATP. 
Okay, so you can see that this is an extremely important storage system. When you eat plant parts where starch is stored, such as oats, potatoes, or rice grains, um, you eat this starch and your body then can break it down into individual glucose molecules. Okay, so this is an example of the chemical structure of starch, and each one of these would be glucose molecules. Okay, so again, glucose molecules linked in a very specific way. Okay, so a kernel of corn is actually a fruit that contains an embryonic corn plant. Most of the weight of the kernel is actually made up of starch, and the reason why is because that starch actually provides energy for that embryonic plant to begin to grow. So again, it could be energy for us and it could be energy for the plant as well. Okay, so if we look closely at how um, starch molecules are structured, you'll see that it has a type of branching. So different types of plants make different types of starch. For example, we have potato starch, and that's slightly different from the starch found in corn or beets. Each type of starch consists of a different number of glucose molecules. Different starches also may show different patterns of branching. So it could have a different number of glucose molecules and different patterns of branching. This type of branching structure relates to the function of starch as a storage molecule. So in times of energy storage, enzymes attack the ends of a starch molecule, releasing glucose molecules one at a time. So you can see here that this would be very easy to do in this type of branching structure where we have that chain of glucose molecules branching off of one another. Branches of glucose chain provide more ends where the enzyme can break down or digest the starch so we can then release those glucose molecules much more rapidly. And then these molecules are then able to enter the process of cellular respiration which again is that process where we use glucose to make usable energy that we call ATP. Okay, so you can see that in this picture right here. A type of fuel called E85 is available at gas stations across the United States and that contains a blend of gasoline and ethanol which is a chemical made by breaking down the starch and corn. So you're starting to see how important this chemical structure is and how starch really is um, a storage system that can be used in so many different ways. Okay, so starch as energy. So animals, um, like we said in the previous slide, can break down the starch for energy. So we have potatoes, rice, corn, and many other foods that you eat contain high levels of starch, which is stored by plants. So when you eat those plants, you can actually break down those starch molecules and release glucose molecules for energy. So like many other animal bodies, your body actually produces enzyme molecules. And enzymes are basically different proteins that perform a certain job. And so there's one that's called amylase. And this amylase breaks the type of chemical bond that links glucose molecules together in starch molecules. So if we have like glucose, 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 in this starch molecule, amylase will come in and break off this bond between the glucose so that you can release the glucose molecules for energy. And remember, we want to release it so that we can use it to make ATP, which will be important for growth, development, and maintenance. Okay, so it takes longer for your body to digest complex carbohydrates, which remember is made up of many hundreds if not thousands of glucose molecules such as fruits, vegetables, and whole grains than it does to digest simple carbohydrates like sugar. So that's why when you eat a bowl of oatmeal you feel more full and for longer than after eating a bowl of sugary cereal. Okay, here's another type of complex carbohydrate. 
other than starch, we have cellulose. And cellulose's main function is to give plants strength and support in their structure. Okay, so cellulose is a complex carbohydrate and it is made up of glucose molecules linked together just like starch. So how are they different? Um, plants actually do not use cellulose to store energy. Instead, they use it as structural as a structural molecule. So it forms the cell wall of a plant cell and really gives the shape and support of a plant cell. The glucose molecules in cellulose are held together in a different type of chemical bond than the glucose molecules in starch. The bond is actually much harder to break down. And the reason why it's harder to break down is because we don't want to break it down, right? Because it's part of the structure of a plant cell and really provides that support. Okay, so you can see here each of these um, molecules here are glucose molecules um, and but they're arranged in a different way than what we saw in starch because we want to make sure that um, it stays intact to provide the necessary support for plants. So all plants on earth produce an estimated 100 billion tons of cellulose every year which makes cellulose the most abundant organic compound on earth. So digesting cellulose. So obviously we eat things um, like different types of plants that have cellulose, but most animals actually cannot digest cellulose. So cellulose contains the most, the same fundamental molecule, which is glucose, right? It's made up of many glucose molecules, but it's a lot harder to break down than glucose, or sorry, than starch because of the different chemical bond that it has. Animals don't have an enzyme that is required to break the bonds holding the molecule together. However, cellulose is really an important part of our diet even though we can't digest it. We call cellulose dietary fiber. Um, and so I'm sure all of you guys have been told to eat at least five servings of fruits and vegetable every day. And you might be wondering why exactly do we need to eat these fruits and vegetables? Well, one of the reasons is because it's an excellent source of dietary fiber. So all of um, the, your fruits and veggies have um, cells with cell walls that contain cellulose. And cellulose is an important part of your diet specifically because it is not digested. That's what makes it unique. It helps your digestive system um, function effectively because it is not digested and broken down. Okay, so bacteria and fungi are unique because they actually are the ones that can digest cellulose. So if you have seen like, for example, decaying logs on the forest floor, then I'm sure you've seen one type of organism that can digest cellulose, which is fungi. So here's a decaying log right here and you see different types of fungi on the decaying law, um, log because this, these fungi produce enzymes that can break down cellulose. So they play an important role in recycling dead trees and other plants in the forest. Termites are another um, insect pest that would need um, bacteria and fungi to help them digest the wood that they feed on. And so termites actually have bacteria in their guts that break down cellulose. By themselves, termites cannot digest the cellulose in wood they have bacteria in their stomachs that actually produce that enzyme that can digest cellulose, allowing them to di um, break down the wood that they eat. And because they're able to break down that wood that they eat, they can get energy and nutrients from it. There are also animals like cows that eat um, lots and lots of plants. And um, if you look at a cow's stomach, there are many cellulose busting bacteria, which allows them to break down a lot of the foods that the cow eats. Scientists and engineers are also trying to find new ways to make renewable fuel, make the renewable fuel ethanol from cellulose. 
They are investigating the use of the types of bacteria that live in termite guts and elsewhere to help break down the cellulose into sugars that can be turned into ethanol. So we know that this can be done with um, like starch molecules, um, but scientists are trying to figure out how to do this with cellulose as well. Okay, the last type of complex carbohydrate we're going to go over is glycogen. So animals store glucose in a complex carbohydrate called glycogen. Okay, so remember plants stored glucose in the form of starch, whereas animals are going to store glucose in the form of glycogen. So like starch, glycogen is just made up of those many glucose molecules bonded together. Glycogen differs from starch in being that it's more highly branched than starch. Humans and other animals store glycogen mainly in muscle cells and liver cells. So like starch, glycogen is easily broken down, right, because we want it for energy. And we it's broken down into individual glucose molecules when energy is needed. Those glucose molecules can then be further broken down and why would we want to break them down? It's so that they can be converted into usable forms which again we'll call ATP. Okay so if we look at the structure of these different complex carbohydrates we look at starch. Remember that um, the starch has a more of a linear structure but we do see branching like we see right here and it's easy access to break down we could break down at any of these um, chains glycogen which again is the storage form of storage in animals for glucose and we see is more highly branch than starch, right? So it's not just linear, but it actually goes more in a circular sh shape. And if we were to look closely to even just one part of this, we would see that even in the parts that we can't see here, there's even more branching. So obviously because there's more branching, there are more opportunities to break it down as well. There is one type of plant that actually produces glycogen. These are the sacropa trees that are found in Costa Rica. Um, these trees actually produce glycogen even though glycogen is typically only found in animals. And so why exactly would these trees start producing glycogen? So these trees are actually almost always colonized by these stinging ants. And these stinging ants are important to these trees because they protect them from any intruding animals that would eat the tree's leaves. So in return, um, these ants actually get a glycogen meal from the tree um, for guarding the tree and preventing animals from eating the tree's leaves. So basically it turns out that these ants living on these cicropa trees feed on these bundles of glycogen that the tree produces. So what ecologists believe is that these cicropa trees evolved this mechanism which feeds the ants a form of carbohydrate that plants don't normally make. This mechanism provides the ants with a ready-to-use form of chemical energy. And because the ants don't need to look for food, they will stay on the tree and make sure that there aren't any intruding animals that would come and endanger the tree as well. So here's an overall summary of what we went over today. Um, complex carbohydrates provide energy storage and structure for living organisms. They are made up of simple carbohydrates linked together. And the three examples that we went over for the complex carbohydrates um, were glycogen, starch, and cellulose. And all of these are actually made up of lots of glucose molecules. So those are the simple carbohydrates that are linked together. And again, the two functions, 
that they are energy storage and they are structure for living organisms. Um, the glycogen and the starch are mainly energy storage and then cellulose is mainly the structure used for structure for living organisms. So here's some important vocabulary you need to know. You need to know that polysaccharides um, are carbohydrates made up of many simple sugar molecules. You need to know that glucose is a monosaccharide meaning one sugar and it's used by cells for energy. We have starch, which is a complex polysaccharide that is formed from glucose and it's found in grains, potatoes, and used for energy. We have enzymes, which is a protein that is a catalyst for chemical reactions. It increases the rate of a reaction without being used up or changed. We have cellulose, which is an unbranched polysaccharide, another type of complex formed with glucose subunits found in plant cell walls and used mainly for structural support. Cellulose is again that one complex carbohydrate that is difficult to digest without bacteria or fungi. And then lastly we talked about glycogen which is a complex highly branched polysaccharide that is formed from glucose subunits and it's found in vertebrates and used mainly for energy storage. Again, this is energy storage in animals. And then starch would be the energy storage in plants.